Arm is set to IPO in just a couple of weeks at a whopping $70 billion valuation, making it one of the biggest initial public offerings of all time. This is no startup. Arm has billions of dollars in revenue, is already profitable, and has even been publicly traded once before. And Arm's designs can be found in almost every kind of electronic device, from tablets and laptops to smart TVs and even self-driving cars. Around 95% of the world's smartphones use Arm-based processors today, which means something like two in every three humans on the planet has at least one device with an Arm-based processor in it. So in this episode, I'll tell you everything you need to know before Arm's big IPO, including why I won't be buying it. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. If you think of the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company as the chip industry's foundry, then ARM could be its R&D department. ARM is a British chip company whose main business is designing processors and licensing those designs to other chip companies like NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm, as well as other consumer hardware companies like Amazon, Google, and even Apple. Apple uses the ARM architecture for the processors in almost every product they make today, from the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, to the AirPods and Apple Watch, and even the Apple TV and Apple Vision Pro headset. In fact, ARM started out as a joint venture in 1990 between VLSI Technologies, Acorn Computers, and Apple, back when it was still known as Apple Computers. Apple actually owned 43% of ARM at one point before they sold their stake in 1996 to acquire another company called Next, which was probably Apple's single best acquisition of all time. Not only did Apple acquire Next's Unix-based operating system, which became the foundation for Mac OS, but they also reacquired Steve Jobs, who founded Next after he was ousted from Apple. When Steve Jobs returned to Apple, he started using ARM-based chip designs as the foundation for the first generation of iPods and iPhones. By 1998, ARM was duly listed on the NASDAQ and on the London Stock Exchange, where it was publicly traded until 2016, which is when SoftBank bought it for $32 billion. It turns out that acquiring ARM was a great move for SoftBank because ARM's chips have soared in popularity over the years. That's because ARM processors are designed to be more energy efficient than x86 processors. As a result, they can be smaller, lighter, and don't need separate cooling which is why around 95% of the world's smartphones end up using ARM-based processors. It's also worth pointing out that big cloud providers like Amazon Web Services and Google are putting ARM-based processors in their data centers as well. For example, the Graviton line of chips designed by AWS are ARM-based. In fact, AWS expects over 20% of their data center servers to have ARM-based processors in them by 2025, and Google Cloud has been following AWS's lead by developing two different ARM-based CPUs, both of which have already been sent to TSMC for trial production using their 5 nanometer nodes. Both chip designs are expected to be in mass production in the second half of next year and be running in the cloud by early 2025. And that's important because the data center market is not only massive, but it's still growing at an incredible rate, thanks to all kinds of services moving to the cloud, the incredible amounts of data generated by everyday internet users, and of course, new kinds of workloads like AI training and inference. In fact, some research suggests that ARM server revenue could reach $100 billion by 2030. That's around a 45% compound annual growth rate for the rest of the decade and most of that will come from displacing Intel's x86 processors for the same reasons I just mentioned, power efficiency, size, and cooling. AWS's ARM-based Graviton 2 chips offer up to 48% higher performance per dollar than the equivalent Intel x86 chips. That's a massive upgrade, and to Intel's credit, they know this as well which is why this past April, Intel and ARM signed an agreement that makes it easier for companies that license ARM's technology to have their designs fabricated by Intel's more advanced chip production nodes. And late last year, ARM added former executives from Intel to its board. And of course, Intel plans to invest in ARM's IPO in just a couple of weeks. NVIDIA will no doubt be another huge investor in ARM as well, since they tried to acquire ARM back in 2021 for around $40 billion. There were a lot of regulatory challenges with that acquisition, so NVIDIA ultimately had to drop it. In my opinion, this would have been an incredible acquisition for NVIDIA, since it would have diversified their offerings into the exact markets that they weren't really in at the time, CPUs for data centers, smartphones, and so on. So I'd expect them to be another big institutional investor at ARM's IPO. 
except now Nvidia can control exactly how many shares they want to buy and at what price. And speaking of institutional investors, Moomoo is a trading app built in Silicon Valley to help investors execute winning strategies. One of the features I use the most is their institutional tracker. For example, if I click on the US markets page and then institutional tracker, I can see the portfolios of legendary investing firms like Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway and Ray Dalio's Bridgewater Associates. Not only can I see which stocks they've bought and sold, but if I go ahead and follow them, I can get notified when they start a new position or they report a new trade. Awesome features like these are why Moomoo has over 20 million users around the world. And right now, Moomoo is giving away up to 16 free stocks and a $50 cash bonus, including a share of Google or Tesla stock if you meet the required minimum deposit. And if you're from Canada, you could win an Amazon gift card worth up to $100. All you need to do is download the app using my link in the description below or in the pinned comment, keep your funds at the right level for at least 60 days, and enjoy all your free stocks. But this offer ends soon, so make sure to lock in those free stocks ASAP. All right. There's one more big investor in ARM's IPO that's worth talking about, and that's Amazon. Amazon could become the anchor investor for ARM, meaning they would buy a huge number of shares at a fixed price right before the IPO, which helps justify that valuation in order to attract other big investors. How huge of a stake are we talking about? Well, Amazon is reportedly looking to raise between eight and $10 billion as a part of this IPO. That would make it the biggest IPO of 2023, and also one of the biggest tech IPOs ever. And that begs the question, is $70 billion a fair valuation for ARM? And to answer that, we need to talk about ARM as a business. ARM's revenues come mostly from the royalties they make from other companies using their chip designs. And like I said earlier, their chips are in everything from servers to laptops, and from smart TVs to 95% of all smartphones. In 2021, ARM's revenues from royalties grew almost 17% year over year. ARM's non-royalty revenue works almost the same way. They collect an upfront fee for making processor designs for other semiconductor companies. And then ARM collects a royalty every time a chip using that design gets sold. ARM's top line revenues were about $2.7 billion for the 12 months ending on March 31st. That's down about 1% year over year. And ARM is a profitable company. They had a net profit of $534 million over that same time period, which was down about 5% year over year. My honest guess is that ARM's revenues and net profits are slightly down due to the same headwinds I always talk about on this channel, a lack of demand for new consumer electronics in a post-pandemic inflationary environment. And I'd expect them to get over these headwinds by getting into new markets like self-driving cars, virtual reality headsets, and increasing their market share in data centers, like I mentioned earlier. But here's something I'm really worried that they won't get over. I started digging through their prospectus, and you don't need to get very far before you run into an entity called Arm China. Arm China is Arm Technology China Limited Company, an entity that's operated independently of Arm and is Arm's single largest customer. Acetone Limited, an entity controlled by SoftBank Group and in which Arm owns a 10% non-voting interest in Acetone Limited, represents an approximately 4.8% indirect ownership interest in Arm China. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Isn't Arm China just, you know, Arm's China office? Well, not really. Arm China is actually listed all over the place in the risk section of this prospectus, like this section here. We granted Arm China certain exclusive rights to sublicense our IP to the People's Republic of China's customers. We expect that our licensing relationship with Arm China will continue to account for substantially all of our total revenues from the PRC and represent a significant portion of our revenues for the foreseeable future. It would be difficult for us to replace any lost PRC sourced revenue in the event that our commercial relationship with Arm China were to terminate or deteriorate. So it looks like this is a real commercial relationship with a separate entity that has exclusive rights to distribute ARMS technology in one of the biggest markets in the world. And it turns out that ARM China is rife with internal power struggles. ARM China, in which ARM itself is in effect only a minority shareholder, underwent nearly a two-year boardroom battle between its local chief and shareholders that ended last year. A group of Chinese investors and a private equity firm control a majority stake. The entity was established in 2018, when SoftBank sold a 51% stake in ARM's Chinese subsidiary, ARM Technology China. 
to a group of Chinese investors led by private equity firm Hopu Investments. Arm China was first overseen by Chief Executive Alan Wu, a longtime Arm executive, but SoftBank ousted him last year after alleging conflicts of interest. Wu denied the allegations and filed several lawsuits against Arm, some of which were resolved in Arm's favor, while others are still ongoing. Which shareholders control Arm China remains unclear. But remember, Arm itself holds an effective interest of only 4.8% in Arm China. So whoever is in control, it's not Arm. Which leads me to my next big question. Just how big of a customer of Arm's is Arm China? Well, further into the prospectus, in the risk section, they say this, a significant portion of our total revenue is generated from a limited number of key customers. In particular, our top five customers, including Arm China, collectively accounted for approximately 57 and 56% of our total revenue for the fiscal years ending in March 31st, 2023 and 2022 respectively. And our largest customer individually is Arm China which accounted for approximately 24% and 18% of our total revenue, respectively, during those fiscal years. As a result of this customer concentration, we are particularly susceptible to adverse developments affecting our key customers and their respective businesses. You know, like a trade war with China or economic sanctions around advanced microchips. The reason this part scares me isn't the fact that they have such high customer concentrations. TSMC's top 10 customers account for around 70% of their total revenues as well. And even though it's not my preferred market, I'm also not an investor who universally thinks China bad. My worry is actually that Arm China went from being 18% of Arm's total revenue to 24% in a single year. That's a 33% increase year over year. But I think it gets even crazier than that. We're also dependent on Arm China paying us the amounts that it owes us in a timely manner and in full. In the past, we have received late payments from Arm China and have had to expend company resources to obtain payments from Arm China. And then when I looked at their financial statements towards the bottom of the prospectus, here's what I saw. Arm China represented 40% of total receivables as of March 31st, 2023, and 54% of total receivables as of March 31st, 2022. Companies record revenues when they make a sale and accounts receivable when the customer hasn't paid yet. So if Arm China accounts for 40% of their total receivables, but only 24% of their total revenues, where's the other 16%? I think that means that Arm China still owes Arm something like $430 million. At first, I thought I was crazy. But then, on page 111 of the prospectus, Arm calls this out specifically. Net cash provided by operating activities increased by $281 million to $739 million for the fiscal year ended March 31, 2023 primarily due to the $713 million in accounts receivable collections from Arm China. So I don't want to give you the wrong idea here. I don't think this means that Arm China doesn't pay Arm, but what is going to happen is this weird lag in how the revenue accounting happens from Arm's biggest customer, whose controlling shareholders are still pretty unclear. Definitely let me know in the comments if I'm way off base here. I did my best to go through this prospectus, but at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet. And for now, my plan is to wait for at least one quarter until Arm goes through its first earnings call as a public company for the second time. Remember, they were publicly traded from 1998 all the way through 2016, but Arm China wasn't established until 2018. So I'd want to see how that relationship plays out in their earnings calls, their investor presentations, and all of the numbers that they didn't have to report as a private company. There's a lot more to cover when it comes to Arm but hopefully this episode gave you some perspective on the basics of their business and their upcoming IPO. But there's one more huge semiconductor breakthrough that you need to know about, so make sure to watch this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.